Welcome back to my workshop. Now in this video I'm going to make a costermonger's wagon. If you don't know what a costermonger's wagon is or you want to know a little bit more about it, have a look at my blog. There's an article there that gives you the history of it all. I think it's quite interesting. Hopefully you'll like it. Now in this project I take it through step by step and literally start with a plank of wood. Uh, I don't bother showing you how to make the wheels because I've already shown you plenty of videos on how to make wheels and I think you'd probably get bored if you saw another one. But if you'd like to see another one, go and have a look at the rest of my channel. There's plenty of them there. So without any further from me, let's get on with it. Let's see how I get on. So with the wheels made, now we need to get on and make the cart. Now as such, I sort of have a design. What I've got is I've, I've got a couple of pictures on, the, on an iPad to work to which is probably not the best way to work and I've sort of vaguely got something down on a piece of paper. We'll start with the two main beams. This is where we're going to do most of the work. Two bits of 3 by 2 or 75 by 50 depending on what version of measurements you're working on. And I need to cut a series of mortises along the side. Now I could put this in the mortising machine but this is an old fashioned cart so let's do it the old fashioned way. So I've started out by marking out where I want the mortars to do and then I'm going to drill it and cut it. I've done plenty of videos on how to do mortises before so if you want to know how to do that go and look at some of the other videos it's probably much more interesting uh, but I'll just get on and start doing these. Well there you are that wasn't so bad only about another 20 more to go. So this is the basic frame that's had mortars and tenons all the way through I've not glued it yet, it's just sort of held there by friction. Now the bit I'm holding on now, this is going to be the handles, and then we've got some legs to go down from there. But up to now it's been pretty boring everyday woodwork, but now we start to get a little bit more interesting for the next couple of bits. And the first thing we need to do is to make the handles. Now this bit here is going to be the handle. I could just leave it like that, but it's uh, not a very comfortable handle and if you were holding that for some time and going some distance I'm sure that would be quite horrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along that bottom there and then we're going to start shaping these two handles into much more of a sort of an oval shape. Now here's something for you to try. My father who used to be a proper carpenter, or a proper joiner should I say, he always used to say you need to practice doing things the wrong way round. So if you're right-handed, you need to practice working left-handed. Because there'll come a point, you know, you'll be stuck up in a roof somewhere trying to fit a roof truss or something like that. And you can't do it the way you would normally work, which in my case is right-handed. You have to work the wrong way. So it's good every now and again just to practice doing things around the difficult way. Just to see how you get on. And in that way, when you do get around to having to do it to the city place, the wrong way around, you've got control over your tools. I think it's time to glue this little lot together. And then we can start building up from there. Now I've got these slats which are going to fit into the body here. Now you remember from the picture I showed you earlier that we have this sort of sloping front. So I've got these bits of wood here. I've got two bits. And what we've got to do here is cut this angle here. Now this is going to be quite a difficult one to sort of work out what it is. And I consider various ways you can do it. I mean, you know, sliding bevel and things like that. Uh, and that would do it if you could sort of work out how to do it. But there is an easy way. So I've got this block of wood here which I'm just going to place there. And then if we cut along that line there, theoretically, that bit should fit beautifully onto there. And if we now put that into place there, oh, I'll tell you what, that's not bad, is it? I've got that just about right. Now we need to make something to go here just as a, a support really. Um, you remember from the pictures there's a sort of little bobbin turn thing so we're going to have something there 
and it needs to be let's just see if we get this right 115 mil so I've made the first one so now we know what we're going to be looking for um, if you imagine that's going to fit on the bottom of the cart like that that's the bit there and then we'll cut that bit there at an angle and it will just look like a variety of selection of little bobbins but uh, I think that looks rather nice and once it's got a bit of paint on it everyone will think it's marvellous As you can see we now have a side there it's not fixed but uh, you can see what it's going to look like but at the moment although we've got a little bit of embellishment there it, it's it's not looking very fancy but what i'm also going to do is i'm also going to do some little scallops sort of and i've marked out all the way across here 100 mil sections with 25 mil in between or if you like it in old money four inches with an inch in between which I must admit is easier for me to do and what I'm going to do now is using the spoke shave is I'm just going to carve in there and there there and there all the way down and exactly the same on the other side and then when I come to paint this so bear in mind this is going to be sort of a, a sort of a darker end of apple green is I will then put gold in all of these and then that will then pick all that out and that's starting to put a level of quite interesting colour, some embellishment. Um, this stops it being a sort of a traditional custom under scarf, because a traditional custom under scarf would just be straightforward green and red. That was that would be it. And if you remember the photograph, that's all it was, green and red. But I want this to look a little bit fancier because these days, you know, it's gonna be used for retail use. They want something fancy, they want something that shouts a bit of bling. Even in the world of wheelwrights, we do bling. Now you can use pretty much whatever tool you fancy. Uh, you could do it with a draw knife. I'm going to use a spoke shave. I know somebody who does it with a craft knife. It strikes me hard work doing it with a craft knife, but uh, you never know, it might work. So, on we go. And as you can see, I've got a nice little scallop there. I'll now come back at it from that end and try and get that even all the way around. You imagine that's painted gold, all those little bits. And we'll put a gold stripe down the middle and that's gonna start looking really quite fancy. Well, as you can see, I rather sort of jumped ahead. But I suppose this is not really a sort of a step-by-step -step video because you're unlikely to want to build one of these for yourself. And if you do, you probably know how to do it anyway. I made the springs. The bit was the most interesting was putting the curl on the end. If you want to see the video of me doing that, have a look at my Instagram feed. Uh, there's a lovely little video on there of me doing it. I almost look like I know what I'm doing. I've made some brackets to go on the bottom which our springs are then gonna sit on. When these were built originally, they were designed to be sort of clattered through the streets of the city. You'll be knocked into things. They had a very hard life. Mine is not gonna have quite as hard a life, well as I don't think it will. I like to think this is good for a hundred years. I hate to think who'd, who'd got it in a hundred years time. Perhaps I should leave a little note or saw them somewhere, you know, inscribed. Um, but then they could always look at the video, can't they? I'm sure video will still exist in some form or another in a hundred years time. That could be part of history. What I'm going to do now is, is a bit of painting. Nothing very exciting. I'm just going to sort of get some primer on all these bits of steel. And then I'm going to fill in the screw holes and things. And then we're starting to sort of look towards the end. Now I'm using a special paint. It's an enamel paint. It's specially made for sort of vintage cars, steam engines, that sort of stuff. It's a high gloss enamel paint. So it's not the sort of thing you'd be putting on your walls at home, but it's just a slow process. 
put on a layer ever so gently start well now we're very, ever so gently rubbing it down I'm using very very fine sandpaper market carts have a sort of a historic colour scheme in that the cart itself is green and then the wheels are red well as you can see I've sort of uh, I've gone on a few steps and somehow you missed out but not to worry you didn't miss very much I'm now at the point that I've got the top coat done so this has had two coats of aluminium primer two coats of the special undercoat and two coats of the top coat so it's starting to look quite nice and glossy and we could if we wanted to just leave it at that and everybody would think that was marvellous as I said before I want this to be rather ornate so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to now start adding in some decoration and this is going to be painted decoration which is not really my thing um, but I've done it a little tiny bit so let's see how well I get on with it so this is when the reason for all of these cutouts becomes apparent in that I'm going to paint all of these and I'm using an imitation gold I'm beginning to hate this um, I wish I hadn't made so many <laughs> scallops it's certainly something that needs lots of practice but until you do it you'll never get any practice So now we move on to the next bit. As you can see I've got this lovely pair of wheels and these have had the same amount of paint as the rest of the carriage. So we've had two coats of aluminium primer, two coats of a special undercoat and then we've had two coats of the enamel top coat which is why we ended up with this beautiful red finish. In between each coat it's been rubbed down several times with increasingly finer and finer paper and I ended up with about 1200 grit wet and dry paper before I did the last lot. Now what I want to do now is to start adding the decoration. This is going to take several forms. On each spoke I have like a little triangle which I deliberately left flat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little sort of chevrons or arrows in there but I'm going to put an under colour in black and then I'm going to line it in gold the black is there I mean you could just do it in gold and it would look quite nice but if you put the black in that gives you a really really stark contrast and that really accentuates the gold so that's what I'm going to do so first of all I need to paint some sort of black triangles in there
so we're at the point we're ready to start putting some wheels on, or at least start thinking about it. This is the, the cart upside down. I've got an axle which we made earlier. Is I've made these very long, I suppose for the want of a better term, we'll call them U-bolts. U so I'm just going to bolt these on, and this will hold the axle in place. So that's the axle. That's pretty firm actually, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm rather pleased with that. So, the moment of truth. I've not tried this before. I've measured, I've calculated, I've checked, I've mended, you name it, I've done it. But I've never actually put this wheel on to find out whether it's clear. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It fits. <laughs> Not that I ever doubted it would fit, but it's always nice to know. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? Of course I had no doubts that was fit. <laughs> but it's nice to know that it does. So here we are, the finished cart. I think you'll agree it looks rather good. I'm rather proud of it. Now hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, Go and have a look at some of the other ones. You never know, you might enjoy those as well. And do remember to press the like button. It makes quite a difference to my life. That's all for today. I'm just going to sort of sit and admire this now for a couple of hours while I work out what to do with it. If you'd like one of these for you, get in touch. I'm always happy to make another one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.